After the world believed him dead for five years, Oliver Queen returned to save his city as the Arrow. Welcome everyone to the Flash Arrow Power Hour, and this is the Queen Consolidated segment of said Power Hour. I am your host, Zachary Hare, and with me, of course, is Philip. Hi everyone. So Phil, what did you think about this splendiferous premiere? Um, it was alright. I mean... I think it was a little too much. Uh, oh, look, everything's nice and well. Ho, ho, ho. Yeah, we're going to talk about that, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> One thing right off the bat, I like this. I mean, really, I don't know all the episodes didn't really bother me. There was just all these li- little things. For one thing, there's too many storylines in the premiere. They tried to start off way too much. I know, but I think uh, a lot of the stuff from last season, everyone was going to be like, well, where's so-and-so at? Where's, you know, where's Thea at? Where's Roy at? Where's... Yeah. But just, uh, I, 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 one thing, I, I hate during the opening scene, uh, he's on top of the truck going, Roy! Like, it's like, you. I just want to see the driver go, who's Roy? <laughs> <laughs> My name's not Roy. Yeah, right. <laughs> he's in prison. You know, I think one of their names is Roy. I heard him yell it. <laughs> Roy, get in position! It's like... <laughs> My, <laughs> My question is, if Oliver has a costume and Roy has a costume, why doesn't Diggle have a costume? Hey, even Felicity could have a costume. Yeah, but I mean, she's not on, on I know. the street now. Uh, well, you know, comic books don't have the best track record with black superheroes. Maybe they just want to admit that he's a black superhero. <laughs> yeah, or it's foreshadowing that Oliver's going to take him off the street or whatever. Well, yeah, I guess. But um, I did like the opener of You Have Failed the City and then the punch with the bow. I did like that. Oh, yeah. It was, it was just so, it was just, man, it was total geek service and I liked it. Yeah, they should put that in the opening every week. So now another thing they did and I did like is how... They address, like, she's, he's, when he's talking to Laurel, she goes, oh, can I say, like, they actually address the whole, shut up! <laughs> Stop talking about superhero stuff out loud! Oh, yeah. They actually address that in this episode. You also, you also gotta like how they're, like, doing the list without doing the list. I know, and that was the other thing I was thinking about. I've even been watch, re-watching last season, I was like, well, what happened to the list? I mean, when, when things are slow, can he go back to that list and be like, hmm, let's well, see what this... Yeah, because uh, as I know, we find out, we found out last season, of course, that the it's not the focal point of the trouble, but these are still bad people. Yeah, yeah, you don't just toss the book out. I mean, you could always, you know, even if it's just like Felicity, go online, keep an eye on these guys. Right, and and as we find out, there's not just names in the list. There's other stuff. So what's the other stuff? Yeah, I don't know if they've abandoned that or. I don't know. Now I did like the press conference. I like the whole we respect him as a hero. Like it's because this season is all about him being the hero, not yeah le- learning what it is to be Arrow. Although we get the schmaltzy scene, like I made this for you, Diggle. <laughs> yeah, it's like arrowheads. The only thing I can make. Yeah, you can make arrowheads. That doesn't mean you can make fine jewelry. Yeah, but, but okay. <laughs> I mean, what do you do? Just just polish it and put a chain on it, maybe. Oh, I don't and know. that's obviously not an arrowhead too i don't know what it, it looked like a star or something i don't know well he made an arrowhead and he bent it up you know i guess it just it looked like something you like it looked like something you'd have to get in the store that did not look like something he made himself no well, maybe he'll start selling them on the streets he does need money <laughs> that's another thing they're not really that it doesn't make i mean he's pete oliver's broke right yeah, cause they, I guess, cause the company's gone or whatever. Right. So but I thought he had a trust fund. Did that get? I, I, did they say if that got run out or something? Cause I don't, I don't know. Plus, I mean, it's like, what happened to the mansion? Did the company own that? Cause I mean, if nothing else, couldn't he have sold the mansion and probably got at least a million for that? I'm, I'm. It's one of those things I'm just not sure, sure of. Yeah, because she said he was. Uh, Felicity said he was sleeping in the uh, Arrow Cave, so it's like. Well, I, I, I'd have to. I know I should probably rewatch last season because I think they. It, it's probably addressed on some level. Yeah. Yeah, but again, I like, I like, and of course we have uh, uh, Laurel and Ollie working together, and they have this great press conference. And for what, for some reason, Paul Blackthorne's head is shaved, <laughs> uh, and he, it looks horrible on him. But okay. Did they shave it in the hospital or something? I, I, which. Well, he probably no. It probably was something more like he had a role in between seasons. That happens a lot. Uh, maybe. And they just said save two bucks on a wig and just have him with the. So and after and I, I but it was a good moment. I liked the whole like he's still a vigilante and we're not gonna like give him a pass. We're not gonna be looking for him like we used to. Yeah, yeah. So now now we know we get our flashback sequence and this time it's Hong Kong instead of the island. Mm-hmm. And of course, Oliver's trying to save capture, and it really doesn't give us much in this scene. It's just him trying to get home, and the, his handler 
catches him or whatever you want to say. I'm going to beat you senseless. Mm-hmm. Oh, I am badass. Do you know who the one that uh, the woman was? But the woman that he wo- when he woke up. No, no, the Asian woman. You know who? That- well, yeah, yeah. Um. I did. I don't know. I haven't. I've heard things. But I don't. I haven't looked her up yet. I believe it's supposed to be uh, Katana. Katana, really? I believe so. Yes. Interesting. And of course, we get in this episode another little hint that Amanda Waller is, you know, the B word. This <laughs> is. She's not. She is not a nice person. But Hong Kong will have to wait because next we get an amazing cameo. Because I, even though I don't like this episode, I love this actor. He's he's giving Mark Shepard a run for his money in p- appearances in cool shows. Peter Stormare. <laughs> I mean, I think that's the only other name you could say where people go, all right. But Mark Shepard, the geeks just glaze over with happiness. But Peter Stormare, I think, is right up there. <laughs> but I just I just saw him. Oh yeah, he's because he has a reoccurring role in Blacklist. That's where we've been seeing him lately. Oh and, yeah. Oh yeah, he's very cool in that. And don't forget to check out the Blacklist podcast as part of Southgate Media. Bling. <laughs> so, anyways. Now, this scene, okay, I'm going to say this. I hate everything to do with Vertigo in this show. Making it a drug is a bad decision, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Because, now, okay, the, from what I understand, the actor who played the original Count is very well liked. I forget what show he was on beforehand, but he's, he was known for it and he was liked. And when he was first announced, the original Count, people were like, he'll do great. He's a great actor. But then they turned him into a mix of Scarecrow and the Joker. Yeah, they made him too much of a clown, kind right. of. He, that's what he was, Scarecrow and the Joker, essentially. Yeah. And this I hate even more because this is, of course, Peter Stormare, so he's much more serious. But he's the Scarecrow. He let's think of it. I'm gonna describe. I'm gonna describe both characters. I'm gonna describe the Scarecrow. See, tell me if it sounds like Peter Stormare's character. Scarecrow is a criminal that poisons people to expose their fear. Ding ding ding. Sound like any room from this episode? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, how hard is it to strap something on his eye or do something to, you know, some vertigo-inducing weapon, you know, that's not a drug? Or maybe, uh, well, yeah, I mean, I don't know why they made it a drug. They just, I I, I, I understand they don't want to do maybe, yeah, make it a device. Like, they had, they gave Black Canary her sonic scream. Give him a, a similar device. That he activate, or even make it, make it like a doomsday machine. It'll affect the whole city. Something, but just stop doing it as a drug. Yeah, or like a handheld weapon, like a gun or something. Yeah, I could buy that. But yeah, I mean, you killed off the original actor. You brought on, brought in a new guy who said he's taking up the mantle. Get rid of the drug. Yeah, and okay, and I, Phil, I don't know how familiar you are with some of the other shows. Do you watch Grimm? No. Okay. There is a creature in Grimm, and I'm trying to say the name right. It's um, Le- it's something like Liebenschlager, because they have a lot of German-influenced names. What that is is a leech creature, and I swear to God, this thing look- that he turned into looked exactly like it. <laughs> we we got to get the Monroe Comfy swear to back us up, because I'm telling the first thing I thought was Liebenschlager. <laughs> they look I- – I should post a picture. Yeah, I'm going to post a picture on the Facebook page, and I want the fans to tell me if I'm right. <laughs> Because it's like, okay, so he's afraid of, wait, he's afraid of man leeches? What? 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 So you're scared. And, and then the weird, like, dart thing, like, pht, pht, I, 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 those pills I push are called vertigo. Pht, pht, and apparently I'm bullseye, because here's a dirt, dart. <laughs> I know, and then my problem was the first time he hit him with the dart, okay, but then the second time, after he's facing him the second time, he hits him again. I'm like, what do you want? I know we probably wanted to face his fears, but wouldn't you, like. Well, I think like, he was killing him. It was an overdose. What? Wait, are we talk about Ollie or the guy? Ollie, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, Ollie. I, I, I think he might have been just trying to fuck. <laughs> Can't say that. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess he was trying to face his fears, but, I, you know, it's like, why bother? Just wear some extra padding. You don't get hit with the drug, and oh, yeah, your, the, your yeah, mind's how, in the game. You mean, how, you mean how he lets himself get hit by the dart? Yeah, the second time, yeah. I, I, I was like that, too. I'm like, what are you doing? What, it, no, he doesn't even dodge. It's like... Pfft. No, that's what I'm saying. I think he purposely did it so he could try to overcome his fear. It's like, well, you know what? Do that on your own time when the dude isn't trying to blow up the stadium. Yeah, I just, I mean, it's, in, my, in my opinion, this is, because I, I, I love him so much, this was a waste of Peter Stormare. Yeah, because what, what did, the way he was talking at the end, does it sound like they're just going to keep, what, you don't like the fur to go? Well, we're going to bring in a new actor next time, and you don't like him? Well, guess what? He'll only be around for episode I've ever heard. That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Yeah, they're trying to make it like a street gang, so like every new gang leader takes oh, up the God, name. Oh, God, the Vertigo but... gang. Oh, God. There's so or, many... or, yeah, or at least the leader, which is even dumber. 
Although I would kind of, I, although I could almost see myself enjoying an episode where it's a bunch of like they call it the Vertigo Wars, a bunch of people is different. Like every drug does something different. That I could almost enjoy. Mm, yeah, I don't know, but I mean, what else uh, for a drug called Vertigo? What else would you? What that's, other? That's what I'm saying. I mean, the whole point of Vertigo is you know it screws with your perceptions, which you. Mm-hmm. Can, but again, like you said, how much different things can you do? That's why it's better. I, no, I th- when I th- heard they were bringing a different count, I'm like, okay. I thought what they were gonna do, and I would, and this would have worked with Storm Air. That maybe there really is, because uh, I'm not sure what country Count Vertigo comes from. I forget the name, but what? But anyways, I could see maybe someone coming. Like the original count was like some illegitimate kid, or or maybe even connected to that country, and the real count comes over. Oh, by the way, the, the, I'm going to say, I have to say this a million times, the answer to why they called them the Count was the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. Okay, but that's from a couple of seasons ago. But yeah, this, it's, this, you, they, they're forcing the Vertigo thing, and it's just, it, that's not going to be a continuous thing. Now, if they make Vertigo an actual person to keep fighting, or even a something, a device, something, then it might work, but it's just not going to work like that. Yeah, I thought that's what they they were kind of going to do this season. When I heard they were bringing a new count, I was like, oh, okay, maybe this will be the main guy. Maybe, you know, he'll be like, that was my little punk uh, apprentice. And right. Him and his stupid drugs, all that's gone, and I'm just here to, you know. You, oh, my God, that would be a great storyline. Like, the count is like a very disciplined man who has a device or a technique, and he throws off people's perceptions. Yes. And the count, the, the kid... He didn't want to wait to train. He just wanted quick the quick way, so he did Vertigo. Yes. That would be an excellent storyline. They need us on the show. Yeah, that's sort of half of these shows. I think they should have, like, a they should pull some fans and, like, show them footage ahead of time and be like, this show, what do you I, think? I, 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 well, I like Arrow. I like it a lot, but sometimes it's like, where did this story? You can so see the network influence. That's the problem. Yeah, I think that is the problem. The CW needs to leave. Uh, like I like I bet Fox leaves Gotham alone because I don't see any uh, studio influence on that. Not heavily. Yeah. Um. You know, Flash that is having a good good start. Yeah, that's uh, only been one episode though. Yep. Yeah, yeah, but we'll see. I know we'll see what happens. But this. I don't know. The CW just won't let go of its influence on this because it well because this is probably their most popular show. Uh, maybe for now, but uh, the Flash had a pretty good premiere. Right. Though. I mean, you, I mean, the the student might surpass the master. <laughs> okay. Now I want to talk about the scene where they run down the guy from the crew because we find out later he was planted with a GPS. Right. Mm-hmm. I have watched this scene over and over, looking. Oliver touches him once, not even. He knocks him out, he flips him. The only way this guy could plant the device is if he was holding it in his hand, waiting for the arrow, and for the two seconds, like, literally look at the scene, it's two seconds that he's near Oliver. It makes no sense that he could plant a tracker that, that all he wants, because does Ollie have pockets we don't know about in that thing? Because it just, I, it, I thought, it was, there's suspension of disbelief, and then there's just forcing a storyline. Yeah, unless, I mean, it's, unless it was supposed to happen off camera or something. Which we, it couldn't have, because he's not the one that brought that guy in. Yeah. Okay, so, um, yeah. Yeah, uh, the, thing, the, the thing that got me with that was, like, once he got to the restaurant, he threw all his stuff in, like, in the bag, and he just, like, hid it in the restaurant. I'm like, eh, I don't know if I'd do that. That's... Yeah, can, yeah, we should talk about Tattoo, because it's bullshit, 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 bull insert bleep here Oops. but yeah it's like um okay he is a high society type so you could get away with stuff but you looks well, like it's it's hidden in the restaurant so if someone finds it they know the errors in the restaurant how many people can be in that restaurant you know men well it's it, that's yeah well if they really but they were just interested in killing him not finding out who he is yeah but i mean anyone anyone could have come across that somebody well, yeah but restaurant. i could i could see yeah true but it, but the other thing is the restaurant apparently i can just walk into a restaurant from this back entrance put a bag in the dumb waiter and no and none of the employees go oh hello sir what's would you like us to keep an eye on that yeah oh yeah oh so also going by the scene okay so it's oliver james bond or even more so batman now because he, he repels, well, he repels on a roof, takes it off, and there's a tuxedo underneath, pretty much. I know, I didn't think that, you know, I didn't think there was that much room underneath that suit for, like, there's a whole There's not! I, re- I remember the episode he got shot, the pants looked like stripper pants, they were so tight. And, it, and it's completely perfect, the suit, not crumple it up at all, not wrinkled. Yeah, and I, you can't say that the bag was left on the roof because he knew he was going to be there, because we clearly see him change right from the suit mm-hmm. into, it's just, oh god, and it was so, and... 
they're ch- it was like it was like Queen Oliver Queen. Da, 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 da. You could hear. Tell me you couldn't hear the music when he was swinging it. Da, 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 oh, I know. Oh, but okay. So we get another scene with Waller, and she's threatening. I like. I do like this scene because because it's true. It's Oliver says to her, "Oh, I could like I could just kill you," and he's like, "Go ahead, do it." And when someone's willing to die, you got to figure out other options. Mm. And then we get. Oh, and then apparently we have. Felicity with Superman. <laughs> Not in this universe. What? Oh God! What does that feel? I mean, is that? I mean, of course, it's work is work for Brandon Ruth, but he, I mean, because the Adam is a, probably a great character to play. I, I'm curious to see if they're going to give him his abilities in this show because shrinking—that's a really hard effect to make look good. Yeah, but did you see he had his little um when he's giving the presentation? He had the little thing in his belt buckle. Yeah. Yeah, that's where the Adam have a size changing thing in his belt, belt buckle. buckle. I know that. Yeah, I just because you know sh- shrinking that's a really hard thing to look. even with t- even I'm sure that it's a TV show budget. And they have a decent budget, but mm-hmm. y- you know what's that going to look like? Because it's it could so obviously so easily look ridiculous. Yeah, I know, but I mean, so I mean, so far they've done pretty decent effects, like on the Flash and that. Mm. Yeah, I, but wonder what that feels like to go from Superman to a DC character in a TV show. Although, in my opinion, well, well, it's not his fault, but that movie was horrendous. Yeah, the, yeah, he wasn't working with a good script there. Well, we can save that for the DC roundtable, definitely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, okay, now, the, I have a huge, I have a problem with this scene. Okay, so we got Felicity, and he's buying stuff in there, being nice, but she is, full, he's full on telling her, I'm hacking, and she's like, oh, you can use this. I'm like, um, what? No. Yeah, I know. I, I, I know that she's like, you know, I mean, she's a hacker, but she does it for good, good purposes. Well, she, I'm like, yeah, how well, do you? Yeah, it's like, how do you do that? But here's the thing even more. Now, I could buy, because, uh, you know, hackers know, you know, and people mm-hmm. working in computer stores half the time are hackers. I believe someone would go, yeah, here you go. Oh, you're going to hack into that? Oh, I've hacked into that. And that's fine. But here's the thing. She is literally a vigilante. Mm-hmm. She's not, she's not, a, she's not, she might not do hand to hand, but I think she counts as a vigilante. She fights crime. Yeah. She would not tell. She doesn't know what he's hacking into. He could be stealing money from a bank. He could be an identity thief. She's not going to tell someone. Who, now I could see her telling a friend, like, "Oh yeah, use this." Mm-hmm. But no, this, no, this is not believable. She would not do that in a million years. You think the whole the whole story there was the the writers were trying to make you think, "Oh look, she's all attracted to him. She's just." Uh... Oh yeah, they were definitely trying to force that. Oh my god! And it was, yeah, it was not working. I mean, he. I mean, they they tried to write him like he was like her. You know the rambling and oh boy, you're trying to make him the female Felicity. It, the yeah, female it, did, Felicity. it didn't work. It didn't work. Now I'm not that. I mean, I'm somewhat familiar with the Adam more from animated than comics, so I don't know what his personality is really that much like. I've only read like two Adam comics, so I mm-hmm. don't know. And I liked him in the cartoon, so who knows? Yeah. I don't know because in the comics, I think he was more of an actual like scientist type than an actual like businessman. I know it's trying to make everyone the Batman. <laughs> Seriously. Now, oh, of course, now, now we get this nice. It, it was a, there's nothing wrong with the scene with Diggle and Lila, and Lila, and um, or that Layla. Uh, is it Lila? It might be Lila. I don't know. It's one. Of, it's an L name. Yeah. So we get this scene with her, and the it, just, it was just it, again. This is another storyline. Oh, we're bragging. Hey, uh, oh God! And did anyone else see that line coming? I fa- I faced Malcolm Merle, and I faced the Taliban. I faced super powered soldiers. I'm terrified. It's like. Wow, could we make that any more cliched and predictable? <laughs> I know, and then that whole that whole thing with Oliver telling Diggle we couldn't go out on the street, and he's like, "You can't make that decision for me." I'm like, "Yeah, he, yeah, he can't. If you want to go out, go out by yourself." I was thinking that it's like I've always it's like it, it's what's Oliver gonna do? Like stop? Like go? It's like. Yeah, that he, it's, he could it, go out and do what he wants. He could do it on it, his own if he really wanted to. Yeah, be like they would be like, "Hey, I quit. I'm gonna do it all." But on I my do, own. I do like the dynamic of when his baby was born. He realized, yeah, he can't be like he's got a family now. I'm, I'm curious to see where they're gonna go with that. Yeah. Now, of course, Diggle has a kid now, and what comic books, TV shows, everything. I hate, hate when they introduce a baby just to get rid of it later. Yeah. Yeah. They've done it so many times. I'm, I'm not going to say which shows, but when I say these things, people are going to know which shows. Either they, either the baby dies during the pregnancy, mm-hmm. or it's a false pregnancy, or the baby gets – here's my favorite in Supernatural and Science shows. Or the baby gets aged 20 years. Mm-hmm. Or here's a personal – this one calls back to the 90s. Or the baby's future self visits. <laughs> it's like, let's just have the kid. 
I mean, I understand, like, in comic books, you gotta adjust it, because, you know, aging's tricky in comics, but this is a real show. Just let the kid age, handle it. If you didn't want to do it, you shouldn't have had him had a kid. Yeah, and, I mean, times, in, I mean, they've been running kind of in real time, because I think when they came back, didn't they say, like, five months have passed? Since, they, like, usually the like do, they usually do that. They like to do that, and they can make it work. Yeah. So, yeah, I just, I... I, or, or, or wait, I missed one. Or the mother leave with the kid. Yeah, or the baby just kind of disappears, is given away, and they don't know where it's at. Or oh, and of course relationships. That's even worse stuff that doesn't work. <laughs> now I, I, of course we get this story. Now it's got to be said. Emily Bet Rick, Rich. Is it Rickards or Richards? Because there's a K in her name. I think it's a. I think it is Rickards. I think it's a D. Because I gotta say, and I, I know I'm not busting any bubbles, but she is just gorgeous. Mm-hmm. She and she, uh, no one, no one anticipated how popular she was going to be. She's like the fan favorite. Oh yeah, because th- in the first season, what, didn't they say she was only going to show up like two or three times, and then she was going to be gone? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the fans were like, uh-uh. and her and um, Stephen Amell have great chemistry together. Yeah. And I love I love this moment. See, this part I like. I love this moment where he's talking about the first time he met her, and this is something that would work totally on a girl because he he says like oh, i met you you were the first person i real person i encountered mm-hmm. and then he's like i was and she goes i was chewing on a pen and he says it was a red one that would win over any freaking <laughs> oh yeah be very observant yes <laughs> yeah if the only thing that could have won over barrett and i was thinking about your feelings <laughs> 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 but this i like the scene here with when they're having dinner together okay so you do like the relationship I like this part of the relationship in the episode. Yeah. When we get later on, I'm going to have some problems. <laughs> well, now, well, now it's going to be the new love triangle of uh, Felicity, Oliver, and uh, Ray Palmer. Yeah, because apparently Barry, so like, they, they just, it, that thing was, how they handled him and her made no sense. Cause she, yeah. They, they were told, now, here's the thing, this is why she, if everyone remembers, the reason she stopped seeing or going to visit Barry is because... She heard about Iris. Yeah, I just saw. I was just watching the episode uh, a day or two ago. Yeah, because then when there was that break in at Star Labs, they they met uh, Cisco and uh, was it Caitlin and uh, yeah, 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 and Cisco told her. Vibe like, and yeah. color frost. Yeah, yeah. And, Iris um, shows up. He's she's his uh, something. No, no, they, they, no, they never said. They just and two seconds ago, go oh, who's Iris? Oh, she's been his childhood friend. And she, I, that's soap opera level stupid. Mm-hmm. Like the whole thing of like, oh, and they, well, they do that in comics too. Like, oh, this has been a misunderstanding. I'm immediately going to turn to a life of crime. Uh, well, do you think they used the whole Felicity Barry uh, relationship as just a, um, yes. like a plot device yes. so they can oh, yeah. shoehorn him in, introduce him, you know, yeah. why is he around for more than five minutes? And to make Oliver a little jealous. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, I completely, that's completely what he was. Yes. Because. Oh man! In fact, that's like that's like what they did with Electro in the Spider-Man movie. It's like a, it's like I'm evil now. It's it's you almost want to hear someone go, "Why? No, ah. like you aren't dating Barry anymore. He's he's with this girl, isn't he? In a coma? How do you break <laughs> up with a guy in a coma? I want and you know you would think Barry would be, wake up and go, "Hey, where's Felicity?" <laughs> yeah, and if he has such a big super crush on Irish, why uh, uh, on Iris? Why was he uh, flirting with Felicity? Yeah, well, that's oh, uh, yeah, I and, oh, and thank him for call to getting in touch with Felicity when he visits Central uh, Central Starling City. I know he he went right to Oliver. Okay, oh, and this is something. Oh God, do I have a, no a problem with this? The explosion. Okay, he picks up Felicity and brings her back to the the quiver i guess we'll call it yeah and um he's he's like is she okay it's okay she just knocked unconscious oh because you're a doctor <laughs> i know like i mean i'm sure it was just like a scalp like a well it's not even that a... an explosion like that could ease i know it's a comic book show and like no one but still i'm i know i'm going a bit realism here but st- i think when an rpg goes up near you i can try to do a little realism well, yeah, especially when you get up from the table, take two steps, and the explosion's like two steps behind you. Yeah, and here's the thing. Like, she could have easily had internal bleeding. A concussion at the least. And, and then the, that, uh, that burn and cut all over her face, I'm like, that requires medical attention. <laughs> it might not be a serious injury, but it needs... Now, of course, Dig- between Diggle and Oliver, and even Roy, they've all been through some stuff, so they don't ba- probably know basic combat medic, but still... It's better to get real stuff. I mean, look at that mark on her face. 
Yeah, I mean, why can't you take her to the hospital? I mean, all you have to say is, hey, we were having dinner at that restaurant when it blew up. Right, it's not like it would... Oh, here's the other thing. He, he picks up the GPS and is like, oh, I found this GPS. It's wasted. Um, It might still have a signal. Can we destroy this? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, look, GPS, plot de- No, it's like, yeah, it's it's like Roy comes forward. Look, I found a plot device. No. <laughs> Oh, but this line between Diggle and Oliver is great because he says stuff. You don't know what I'm thinking. He's like, I've known you for three years. I know I'm the only man who knows exactly what you're thinking. Uh, that <laughs> line, I like that line because it's yeah. true. Well, I don't know. I think you could say that about Slade Wilson, though, too. They spend some time together. Yeah, but he's yes, but he's in a cage on the island, probably going to be part of the Suicide Squad. I was going to say for now. <laughs> Oh God! Let's not get into that because I'll wait to tear that apart. How I feel about what they've done to Deathstroke, but anyways. <laughs> now I don't. Now let's go into that. Do you? What's your opinion on Ollie and Felicity getting together? Mm, I don't know. I think it's. I'm thinking. I'm thinking a wait and see approach. I know a lot of people want to see it, and I I have nothing against it, but I don't know. I'm. I'm. Oh, I'm. I'm on the. I'm. I go back and forth because if they can make it work, fine. But I, in fact, it's like Felicity says later on: just either do it or stop. Yeah, but it's a CW show. You know that they're gonna. I know. I know. God, it's a. I don't know what it is about CWs and not doing relationships. They. They want it. They want to hook the boys. They want to hook the girls. They I know. Are... I know. Well, yeah, but girls are not all. It's such a stereotype. I know so many girls that love good action-packed, believable relationships and storylines. They don't want this crap any more than guys do. And when I, I know, but when I say girl, I'm thinking like 13, they're trying to get the 13-year-old oh, girls. Yeah. But, oh, God. That's why I'm glad I corrupted my niece early on. She likes some good TV. <laughs> <laughs> but I love how the, apparently this this show's uh, solution to the all the Laurel hate is to barely have her in the episode. <laughs> Yeah, but like we said, I, th- I think they packed a lot of stuff into this first episode, you know. And I hope this doesn't become a regular thing. Him, uh, uh, Captain Lance trying to get in on everything. Oh, heart, every episode. Will I get to the hospital in time? Yeah, that Elizabeth, come to join you, honey. Uh, yeah, I know. I think uh, Laurel Trick kind of uh, yelled at him about that. Yeah, I think I, I, I believe so as well. That it was like the the scene between. Oh, by the way, can I just say, that is the weirdest, I know it's a front, but that is the weirdest tattoo location ever. I mean, that looked like a set. What? The, the place where they confront the new Vertigo. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. like, wow, this doesn't look like a set at all. <laughs> it, it's, it literally looks like they were fighting in the, because uh, the set, it's the tattoo place itself looks kind of cool, but like they, the fight spills over. It's like, oh, guys, we got to take it back. You fell into the next scene. <laughs> it looked like a tattoo m- museum or something. Yeah. <laughs> But, um, it's just, they, they've, like, this is normally, the thing between Oliver and Felicity is, like, normally would take a half a season or a few episodes, they condensed it in the one episode, It's which is kind of weird. Yeah, but, um, seeing as how we're not, we've already reviewed the first episode of The Flash, I was gonna bring up, um, you know the scene, I mean, I, it kind of ties in, because we saw Barry call o- Oliver. Yeah. Which is kind of weird because that you would think that scene happens before the scene that happens in the Flash, but when they're on the rooftop talking, I, well, now it seems even weirder because on the Arrow episode we see Oliver in regular clothes answer the phone. Barry is, isn't in a uniform, and he's like, "Can I talk to you?" So they, I guess, they decide to meet on a roof. So what? Oliver goes home, puts on most of his suit except well, his mask. I, I made a, I made a note here. Barry, he, Barry calls him. Mm-hmm. He picks up the phone and says, "Okay, I'm gonna meet you." Mm-hmm. How does he know where to meet him? He he didn't say, he didn't even say it's Barry. I'm in Starling City. He said I need advice. He didn't say I'm in town. I don't want to talk. He said I need advice. You would think, yeah, like, okay. What's the advice? You know, he's on the phone. <laughs> yeah, that I that I would assume that I I just gave it the benefit of the doubt that it happened off camera. But yeah, I'm just saying it's a nitpick, but it's just there. It's just I think the, I know. And then, but yeah, it's just like why did they have to meet on the rooftop, Oliver in costume? It's like. Why couldn't they have just met, you know, at a restaurant or something? They're both in regular clothes. No one would know, you know. Well, something I didn't talk about when we did the pilot, because I didn't think about it. When I did the rewatch of the pilot, I realized something. There is no, and I'm hoping this is addressed in the second episode of Arrow. There is no reaction to Oliver in the pilot of him having powers. It's like, oh, you're fast. 
how fascinating. Yeah, like, I once you, again, once again, I I just assumed that we caught up like yeah halfway through the conversation. I, I, yeah, I, it's, and just, he, it's just he had already explained to it since the audience had already seen everything that he had, he had that they just didn't show that part where he explained the all of it I, or I, what happened in the pilot. If you look at it, that's just how it looks. It's like, hey, Ollie, I got powers now because yeah. that's even though he's met some different people this is i'm pretty sure barry's his first real meta human mm-hmm. so you think he'd be i there i'm just hoping next episode is the conversation yeah i'm just i don't know if they're gonna show it because i you know you because they showed the other the, the actual conversation on the flash but do you think they're trying to portray oliver like a bat more of a batman type again you know not yeah. as emotional you know keeps his cool in any situation i i guess but i just not sure that, okay so we should definitely talk about how apparently the Atom is a jerk. <laughs> no, this this really bugged me because he they want to make him trying to take over the company. Fine. Mm-hmm. But he's like all surprised. Oh, oh, wait a minute. I completely lied to you, screwed you over and used you. And you're mad? <laughs> it's, just, it, it's like, yeah, dude, you, she should be mad. It's like. Do you think the whole? The, I know, but do you think he he was like that because he was like, well, my whole plan in th- the entire time was try to screw you over, but now I find you kind of attractive. So oh, I know that's not, and it's not working. It's not going to work. Her and him. I know. Don't don't. I hope they. I mean, I know it's going to happen, but don't write it where she's like falling for him. I mean, oh, would you fall, would you fall, would you fall for someone like that if they screwed your best friend? You know, out of his company like that. I mean, it's it's actually she puts it best. If if it was just him lying, mm-hmm. f- and you fine, but he literally used her to screw over her friend. If he mm-hmm. researched the company, then he knows that they're friends. He's because it's. I mean, he she was his assistant, and it's yeah. probably somewhat knowledgeable that they're friends. And so, like he would hear something, he yeah. would know. So, and, but that's the thing I don't like his surprise, and that's why it's a surprise. Like you said, they're gonna try to force them together, and it's not gonna work you think he's just faking the surprise though you know trying to be all cute well, around her oh well, that's brandon really brandon ruth is just being brandon ruth in this in the <sighs> in the in the two roles that i know him from <laughs> well actually three he's now the atom <laughs> it's just it's, you almost want to tap the writers on the shoulder and go um you do know he's a hero right <laughs> Yeah, but is that going to be the thing that he's a jerk at first and he, you know, along the journey, it's a, you know, how he learns to be a better person and stuff. And Yeah, when he gets his own show, we can address that. <laughs> I saw, I did see something, what was it, on Facebook or something they were talking about. They're looking for more DC shows to do, uh, well, you know, TNT, TNT's doing um, Titans. Yeah, I know. I did see that. Yeah, and then CBS I, I do not is doing know if... Supergirl. Mm. Oh my god, that's where I know the guy. I I'm looking up people's IMDb. Mm. <laughs> the guy who's um like Oliver's hand- handler, he was the robot creator in Real Steel. <laughs> the guy who was like made Zeus. Yeah. And that th- that's a nice little tidbit. Oh, okay, another thing I had a problem with. The scene at the state they find of course they find out that the new count I guess we can call him the new count is going to although he's only the count for this episode apparently. You never know. He could be back. Yeah, well it's Peter Stormare, so we'll see and um mm. and there's a scene where because apparently the, the security at the stadium is complete crap oh why because they can just sneak in a whole, a whole uh that was a load of c4 that that c4 was the size of a crate i know uh, it's just uh, and, and here's the thing like they said there are the heads of three different crime families here or gangs wherever you want to say i'm guessing someone would go hey what's that guy doing yeah, you think someone would have bodyguards or? I mean, I know they, the, the excuse probably is, oh, they're all looking that way. But yeah. It's like he clearly, it's not even hidden. It's in a hallway. I know. It looks like you know when you go to a stadium where you actually walk into the stadium. It looks like it's just sitting right there. Actually, you know? okay, oh, dude, no, it's, I have the perfect situation. Is excuse me, where's the bathroom? You take a left at the bomb. <laughs> go down. Yeah. The... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where can I get a hot dog? Yeah. Make a left at the C four. Yeah. Go down to. Yeah. And, and this is something I, I, it's 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 probably purely an editing thing, but I want people to look at this scene where the count says the bomb is here, and they walk away, and then the air, and then arrow shows up. Mm-hmm. There is not enough time in the space of that hallway that he wouldn't still be there, the count. And then where Roy comes from is clearly where he was coming from, so that makes even less sense. 
I think it's just a shooting. It's like a, an editing problem. Well, they they edit it wrong. It's it's a nitpick, but it's just something I noticed. Yeah, well, don't don't get too hung up on geography in this show because I, I know. Well, it's like in, mean, it's like in comic book movies when nighttime comes way too quick. Yeah, but it's just like you know the whole Iron Heights thing. I mean, now it, now what? It's it's closer to Central City, which they've which they said in the Flash. What is six hundred miles away from Starling City? Hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's, Barry's not supposed to test his limits yet, but apparently he's going to try running across country. Yeah, <clears throat> but and we keep saying Starling City. Is it? It looks like it's going to become Star City. Yeah. Can they hurry up and do that already? Yeah, I think I think they're learning their lesson. Stick to the source material as much as you can. Well, oh no! After this premiere, I don't have a lot of faith in the writers. Like you said, I don't know if it's the writers or if it's the you know the network itself poking its head in. I bet it's the network. I bet any amount of money. Yeah, because there are times these right the era writers have shown they have the hang of this. So I'm I'm pretty sure you were right about the whole network thing. Mm. So, oh man, it just some of this is just so they say so they they stop the bad guy and, they, and the count has that dumb speech where he's like, "You have given Vertigo power." It's like, no. No, 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 no. Yeah. Vertigo is not a character in DC Comics. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> and then, how about that? How about the last minute appearance by uh, Sarah swooping oh, in? God. Yeah. Isn't she supposed to be halfway around the world? She what? She just happened to swoop back in again? Well, no. Well, they said she was. She um was listening to their radio frequencies from halfway around the world. Well, she was already in town. <laughs> Yeah, because apparently that that uh, League of Assassins she couldn't get away from. Maybe she had a furlough. Yeah, yeah, the, you know the League of Assassins she can't get away from. She just took her like third vacation from them. Yeah, and so the, the, well, she was obviously just there to give that speech to Oliver, which is weird because the speech had no impact on any of his decisions. <laughs> In fact, he made the opposite decision of what she told him to do. Mm-hmm. So okay. <laughs> And then, although at one point, I, he Oliver says, "I can't be both Oliver Queen and the Arrow." It's like there is no reason Oliver should run Queen Consolidated. He has zero training. Yeah, and he it's been shown he neither had the time or the most of the time he doesn't have the motive. You know, he doesn't want to do it. I mean, he he was a party frat boy, and then he became. The a super it's like he said like I believe well the Oliver who he is now might be able to run the company because of his but even even with his cunning he's still not a businessman yeah so uh, although he, I don't I don't want the Adam running it either you know? no but I think Oliver needs to get the company back and he needs to put someone he trusts in charge like well, maybe know, his maybe a stepfather his stepfather would be perfect yeah is he even in the credit I don't think he's even in the cast this season is he yeah I don't I don't know I mean he wasn't in it much last season either he he popped up a few times I don't know if he I don't think he was a regular cast member last season either I don't know I think I still think it was stupid killing his mother uh I guess but I mean how 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 what other direction were they gonna take that's her story in though yeah, I, I suppose I don't know. I mean, but, how? I mean, what were they going to do? Have her become mayor of the city? Okay, I mean, uh, how, how believable was that? It's funny she... you should mention that because I thought of something. Hmm. Who's the mayor? Both the mayor's dead, and she's dead. Who's the mayor? Yeah, probably some, you know, just some politician. We yeah, it's know. probably not going to matter. But it's just something I thought of. It's like the mayor yeah. got killed, and then the person running against the mayor got killed. So who's the mayor? Yeah. <laughs> See, that's what they sh- that's what they should have did this season, with, like like they did in the comic books, make Oliver the mayor. That could maybe they will. Yeah, get, you know, he could have got the sympathy vote after his mother was killed. Yeah. So. Diggle's daughter is born, and we get this nice. I, I, I mean, it, it's realistic because he's gonna be. You know, he's like he's gonna. I, I don't want to. I mean, but obviously he's still gonna be involved with the show. So I wonder what they're gonna do. Yeah, I mean, is he gonna be more behind the scenes again, or you know? Well, I guess we'll see. I do like this part with Felicity and Ralph. She, she, she hacked. She was so pissed at him. She hacked all his stuff and put apparently porcupine fart audio files. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you can find anything on YouTube these days. But I, I, I do like this. It's just such a weird line. I like it. If you excuse me, there's another slimy human I that needs me. Let's. <laughs> I mean, she is the star of this episode. Like the only reason to watch it half the time is her. Mm-hmm. And she's just so likable. But just... oh yeah. I mean, I, I'm. That would be funny if he, Diggles says, "I want to leave this," but the if Layla says. No, I, this is who you are, that kind of thing. Yeah. 
or you know what? Something someone's probably going to come back to the family, and realize that he, he's you know something. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what they do because obviously Diggle's not leaving the show. Yeah, or something's going to happen. Oliver and Roy are going to get I don't know captured or something. Uh, oh yeah, something's no. going to happen, and Diggle's like, I got to get it. I got to get them. So that okay, then we get the we find we're back to Hong Kong and we find out they're keeping him here by threatening the family. Obviously, that's gonna work. That will work on him. Mm-hmm. You know, if she's gonna be Katana, that probably means something bad's gonna happen to the family. You think? Well, maybe. I, with this show, you just don't know. Like the oh god, she's what, is they gonna copy Deathstroke? Like the the father and the son are gonna die and the wife is gonna blame like i swear a blood oath against the guy whose fault it's obviously not yeah oh uh, you're gonna think she's gonna come after oliver god i don't well if she is katana obviously she's probably gonna pop up in present day sometime this season yeah well we'll find we'll find out because i again katana's not a character i know a lot about so <laughs> in this scene felicity says what we're all thinking and tells Oliver to stop leaving her on and to basically go jump off a cliff. Uh, I love how he kisses her. And she's like, it, it's like, you can't kiss her and say, I I can't do this. It's like, and I love how she's like, no, no. Yeah. I love how, because Laurel would have gave him, Sarah would get, I, Felicity's like, no, no, I don't care if you're cute. It's not happening. I'm not playing, I'm not playing this game. And I yeah. really, I mean, this, it's so weird, like, they are horrendous at writing Laurel. They are. They, they, I mean, I, I remember at the beginning I hated her, but I realized it's not, and the actress is fantastic. She's beautiful. She's talented. But but it's obvious with Felicity, they can write women. With Sarah, uh-huh. they can write women. But for but why can't they write Laurel? <laughs> yeah, la- last season they kind of they they would take her in one direction, make oh, a complete God, turn, go fans. another direction. I hated her last season. Mm-hmm. Oh god! And did they have to shine a light as Oliver and Felicity kiss? There was a bright light. You have to watch the scene again. When they kiss, there's a bright light shining pat through their faces. Yeah, I think the whole point of the Oliver Felicity thing this episode was the writers or whoever telling the fans, "Look, this is what you wanted. Look, it's not going to work." But it, it it didn't make any sense because he's she rejects him, but he was already saying it couldn't work. I'm like. Doesn't that mean they're both saying no? But they clearly were showed the scene like she was rejecting him. Yeah. But with what it doesn't, the, it's like nothing matched the body movement, the dialogue, what they were trying to do. But uh, but I do still like her walking away. I like that it shows a lot of strength for her character. Mm-hmm. And then we get this scene, the last scene. Uh, I the one everyone's talking about. I want to hear your thoughts before I t- I talk about it. <laughs> I just, I, I thought it was kind of crowbarred in that, that that's why yep. I, I was like, you know, that's why she had to show up at the last minute to help Oliver so she could be there. But I had, you know, I'm kind of thinking, do you think she's going to stay dead? Well, I've, I've always wondered because she's obviously connected to Ra's al Ghul. I wonder uh-huh. if they'll ever introduce the Lazarus pit. Exactly. See, a lot of people said they won't introduce the Lazarus pit because that's a metahuman kind of thing. But they have metahumans now. Yeah. This is a so, metahuman. They're going to start having metahumans. Yeah, well, that's what they were saying. There was an article somewhere where they are like, oh, yeah, season three of Arrow, we're going to cut back. We're not going to really deal with the metahuman thing. I'm like, how are you going to do that if you're crossing over with the Flash for at least an episode? And uh, is Solomon Grundy going to? I'm oh god, I'm so worried about him. I know. Oh god, they better get him right. Just very. If they want to make him create by science, well, no, they can't. He's a magical. He's a supernatural creature. You gotta have magic. That's another thing. I bet they'll never have the guts to have magic ever. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, maybe, maybe they're saving all two. Um, maybe they're worried because just with Constantine and stuff, they don't want to. God, I would, well, tell me, who wouldn't love a show about the DC supernatural heroes? Well, hopefully they'll introduce them on Constantine, if nowhere else. Oh, well, I, I told Lilith that if they ever do an Etrigan episode, I'm I'm guessing <laughs> I love it. Be gone, be gone. The form of man, behold the demon Etrigan. I mean, he's a badass demon that rhymes. You can't yep, beat yep, that. Yep, all the time. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. <laughs> Ah, boy. Jeez, you yeah. should go be a mime. Now, does so, anybody want a peanut? Uh, <laughs> all right, well, here's a question. Who do you think uh, shot the arrows in the Sarah? I mean, I they obviously want us to think it's Merlin. Yeah. But, but I don't know that it would be. I'm thinking it's either Roz or one of his people. I don't think it's one. It's got to be someone, because the way she says, what are you doing here? Yeah. 
I'm thinking it's Roz or one of his people, just because I mean, as we said, she seems to come and go out of this uh, now do you secret think... society. Plus, she's she was shown he she broke his daughter's heart. So, are they gonna have the guts to have? Her? And here's the thing, though, Roz is a Batman villain. He's I know. in the top ten. He is so. And you know what? There is one character they could easily bring in that could, that's an all encompassing. Just bring in Vondel Savage. Yeah, he's someone that could be. Uh, I could see him, and he's because he's right on par with Ra's Al Ghul. In fact, yeah, I would love I to mean, see those two guys go toe to toe. Yeah, I mean, I, I get. I was gonna say, I don't know, but I mean, I guess they're kind of similar. I mean, they're immortal. I mean, Vandal's a lot older than Ra's, but yeah, but it's just okay. If Sarah is dead, I'm pissed because it's a stupid idea. I hate the now. I know, like we don't know if Laurel's ever going to become Canary. It's been discussed. We don't know. I mean, I think in the preview they showed her fighting more, mm -hmm. but I don't know. But it's just. I think I think they're going to try to make her be the Canary. That the when her sister's body drops and right in front of her, I'm like, oh, they're going to make her the Canary. If they well, just because I hate the idea that they they invented her character just to kill her. Because she's very cool, very interesting, and obviously insanely hot. Uh, let's not deny it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she really, I mean, and they like her way more than Laurel. Yeah. Although it, the, the, the writers might see this as a chance to turn Laurel's character around, too, though. No, you know, okay, you know what? I could buy. Maybe she doesn't get killed. I, or somehow, she, I could, if they want to injure her so she can't be the canary anymore, I could buy that. Yeah. But just and, oh, and this is something I hated. I understand that, of course, people have got quick read, but Sarah's got really good reflexes. Yeah, but uh, was she shocked that, to see whoever she saw? Or? That's what I mean. Like she doesn't even move when she gets shot with the arrows. Now, oh, I, I just thought a thought. Oh God! Everyone's thinking it's Merlin. What if she was caught off guard because it was Thea? Oh, I don't. Oh God, I hope. Oh God, don't make Thea evil. Well, I, she's already with Merlin, well, isn't she? So. Well, I can understand. I just. Oh god, they were that doing might, that might be a test for Merlin, you know. That would be so that they were doing so good with her character. Don't just make her a cookie cutter villain. I know, but I mean that I mean that would be a surprise. I mean that that would be a way that Sarah could be caught off guard. Couldn't it be like, oh, it's little Thea? Boom. Well, I I got help you wrong. I really really did. I know. It just popped into my head. I I hope so too, but Maybe it's Tommy. <laughs> hey, if they introduce the Lazarus pit. <laughs> I know, but I'm. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, see, it it could be a double blind. If it's double blind, then it is Merlin. And I don't like that they killed Sarah, but they better keep. I mean, unless it's the Lazarus Pit bringing her back, she better be dead. Oh, God, don't tell me. I mean, don't tell me she dropped off a building with three arrows in her and be like, "Oh, she's alive, barely." Well, she could. That could you could conceivably survive that. Just yeah, there, there, were, there were all stomach shots. And if she got like immediate medical attention, now she ain't getting up for a while. Yeah, I was gonna say, don't don't be getting her up this season. We'll, I, I don't know. We'll see. I just, it's just, it, if they want, I don't know. If they want to kill her at the end of the season, maybe, but just the way it's like, hey, here's Sarah. All oh, but yeah, that's how it is. Hi, Sarah. Bye, Sarah. I don't know. I, it just, it's all every. They've raised a lot of issues, and it's gonna all matter how they handle it. Yeah, that's gonna be the deciding factor. Yeah, like I said, this, I think this first episode was a lot of set up. It's how they execute what they've set up. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, well, well, that's it. I think that's it for this week, Phil. Yeah. So we're looking forward. We'll see you in all they handle, all they take care of. So remember, if you want to guess, uh, Phil, do you have the, our contact information for the people? Yes, I do. Uh, our email is the Flash Arrow Podcast at gmail.com. Uh, we're on Facebook, the Flash Arrow Power Hour Podcast. Twitter is um, at Flash Arrow Pod. Uh, we're also on Instagram, before the bat underscore Flash Arrow Pod. And Tumblr is before the bats slash Flash Arrow Pod. All right. So uh, that's all for us this week. Stay tuned. Keep in touch because, of course, we got. Flat, we got Flash, we got, we got so many good shows bubbling over at Southgate. So, Phil, take us out. All right. Come back next week, everyone. Because remember, don't fail this city or this podcast. If you would like to donate to help pay for this and other Southgate Media Group podcasts, simply go to our website, southgatemediagroup.com, and click on the Donate button. It can be as little as a dollar or, well, as much as you want <laughs> help keep this fun going by supporting this and our other shows 
Thanks again for listening, everyone. You're the best fans in the world.